Hello everyone, I'm Alice. Today we are going to talk about conducting your marketing on social media. To conduct the marketing on social media, there are three important things you have to keep in mind. First, don't be afraid of the negative. Second, don't be afraid to throw out what is not working. And finally, don't fall in love. We will discuss in detail about these conducting manners. Firstly, when we talk about why we should not be afraid of the negative, every day we have to deal with clients. Thinking that you can, you can prevent the negative things from being posted about you on social media sites just by staying out of the social media marketing, it is a huge mistake for any company to make. So don't be afraid of the negative. Facebook, Twitter are two popular sites. Twitter has huge users over 30 years old. Facebook has one of the fastest growing demographics is users over the age of 45. Although anyone can be active in social media, some types of social media tend to be more popular with a certain demographics. You cannot let the fact that consumer customers are increasing their power, gaining control, and expressing their opinions scare the company away from becoming involved in social media. Negative opinions will always exist when dealing with social media, companies need to fully understand that they are no longer totally in control of what is being said. The public relations team can no longer install control over what people are saying about you to the press. Journalists now want a balanced story. In search of that balance, they search on Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Journalists visit all different kinds of social media sites to find the other side of the conversation. A lot of companies let an outside PR company, ad agency, or search engine optimization, SEO, resource handle their social media. You and the staff will need to hone the social media skins and then look to your ad agency or SEO professional to have you with the final poise, such as dealing with the negative side of social media. If the strategies include being active in Twitter or one of the audience members ask for something directly related to the beer making process, how PR personnel answers this question? We need to know that one of the beers has such beautiful amber glow or the taste of the beer you make has a subtle but delightful hint of apricots in it. They won't, and you won't want them to try to answer anyway. So, they have to come back to you for the answer. Unless your outsourced company has one of its own team's members on site and integrated in your own marketing team when the question is being asked, the elapsed time between the questions is asked and the answers will not be as fast as people in Twitter expect it to be answered. You will lose the opportunity to engage that audience member when his interests were at highest. The team member, if had been trained to handle customer experience, could turn bad experience into a positive one and stop the negative information from spreading from those six or eight hours. An outsourced company cannot do that a quick and efficient manner unless they, are, they have some truly integrated and part of your team. Even in the offline world, companies have to deal with both legitimate complaints about their business and constant complainers who are out to get as many free services as they can from the company. In the offline world, the staffs come to know the difference between the trolls and customers who have duly wronged by your company. When online, you don't have that face-to-face -face interaction with the customer, 
so the job of dice firing, the difference is a little tougher. You don't want to stop chasing the tanks and wasting the time with the trolls and complainers. These types of people aren't really and truly the social media community types because they are focused only on themselves. After a while, they get pretty really easy to spot. Therefore, you should know the difference between the constant complainer and upstairs customer. A few sites can help you spot, uh, can help you sort the trolls from legitimate upstairs customer. For example, they complain about everybody and everything, not just about your company. The world has wronged them. They don't complain on just one site, such as Yap. They complain on a lot of sites all the time. They use the same username and or avatar across social media sites so that they can be found easily. Other companies have tried to appease them no, to no avail. They have new grief every day or every week. They tend not to have a lot of fans or friends. They engage in arguments with community members quite often. If you do realize that you are dealing with a troll, the best course of action is to just acknowledge their displeasure in a professional manner and apologize for any con inconveniences they encountered. It's best not to engage this type of person any further. What's more important about this is the most of the other community members are smart enough to know the truth will never be made happy. They will always notice the polite and business-like manner of acknowledgement and will respect it. You can spot the legitimately upset customer with this size. For example, until the incident that upset them, they will talk positively about you. They communicate in a friendly manner with the entire community. They actively create a new content for the community. Unlike the constant complainer, they rarely bad mouth anyone. They have a lot of friends and fans. They generally have fun with other community members and attempt to resolve issues or disagreements. Paying more attention to upset customer than trying to fit a troll will improve your bottom life and your reputations in the community. Members of social media communities are pretty quick to identify and know full well which members are the constant complainers and will never be made happy. If they see that you are catering to the constant complainer, you, will, you can lose respect in the community. This is why it is important to understand who you are dealing with. Consider the example of Royal Car Caribbean Cruise Lies. In May 2008, the company opted to take the unusual measure of banning a couple whom they consider constant complaints. The couple from Cleveland wrote reviews of this cruise on social media forums geared toward travel on cruise lines. Each time they complained, the cruise lines respond by giving them some types of discount, which the couple duly reported in forums. The members of these communities took notice and also felt rather strongly about this couple's actions. The, the communities as a whole took action and community members wrote to the president of Royal Caribbean. Being present in social media can go a long way toward giving you authority and respect when dealing with negative situations. On social media sites that allow community members to review comp companies, their products or their services, it is becoming more important for companies to be directly involved in this size. So you need to handle the negative with style. To understand the world of social media more intimately, I use social uh, sites for just about everything I do. 
Uh, my friend David took a trip to Key West, Florida and used trip advisor to find a hotel. He wanted a smaller hotel closer to downtown, but far enough away from the hostel and bustle. The Palms Hotel on White Street in Key West is in active in Chief Advisor. Hotel staff monitor this comments and actually respond to both negative and positive reviews. When there are negative reviews, they don't discredit the reviewer. Instead, they explain the situation to the complainant. The Palms is a pet-friendly hotel, but it does have a weight limit on the pets you can bring. Unfortunately, that rule was not recent, was recently put in place, which a, a big disappointment for guests who visited before with dogs above the new weight limit. As you can see, management responded. They acknowledged the complaint and didn't discredit the complainant, but they also explained why the rule had changed. This wasn't only respond the Palms had with chief advisor either. How the Palms respond in each situation, whether it was negative or positive, had a big influence on the decision to stay um, there. As more people use sites such as chief advisor to make their decision about whether to stay on vacation, it becomes increasingly important for property owners to become more involved with these communities and reviewers. When you are involved in a business, you have to deal with negative aspects sometimes. Although we have been conditioned to handle problems by traditional means, such as utilizing PR company, today's online world and social media sites are requiring business to become more intimately involved with their customer uh, and both their braces and complaints. The difference is online world is the speed at which customer can share their experiences. If you respond in the right way to the negative reviews, comments and other types of media placed in social media sites, you can actually turn negative situation into positive outcomes. It's all a matter of how you as the company respond. Second, to, to conduct the marketing on social media, you should not be afraid to throw out what is not working. Starting or implementing a social media strategy for the wrong reasons won't have your company. Also, just because your marketing agency think a particular tactic could work doesn't mean it's the right for the company. Continuing a marketing tactic without knowing whether the efforts are successful for the bottom line is like the plight leading the blight. If you are just engaging people in a forum without first establishing the end goals, the team will blindly implementing a marketing tactic without knowing whether it can actually succeed. Continuing to engage the community without monitoring the effect on the company or measuring the success or failure can lead to wasted efforts. Social media marketing has no rules. Just because you start a social media com campaign does mean not you have to keep doing it the same way. Sometimes what you thought could be value to a co community will not be received well. Instead of continuing to waste money and resources, you should re-evaluate what you are doing and tweak your strategy. Measuring and monitoring success with social media marketing is very subjective and fluid. A successful approach for one company might be a failure for another. Most of the time, you need to measure your success manually. The social media marketing efforts would rarely result in direct action. Instead, social media affects the more intangible aspects of a company's marketing and branding. So how do you tell if the strategy is working? You can monitor and measure the efforts. 
monitoring is different from uh, than measuring. You need to use special light monitoring tools that can tell you where people are discussing your company, your products, or your services. Furthermore, these tools can help you go the amount of buzz around your company and can even alert to you a potential problem on the horizon. Monitoring tools can help companies respond to both negative and bad situations in a timely manner. Companies can use website analytics for measuring, but the approach has some drawbacks. Most companies are limited to seeing only their own analytics. For example, if you could measure the success of video that you post on the company site, but you could not be able to monitor the success of the same video posted on YouTube. Although YouTube does provide a decent amount of data about your video, you still must manually port all those measurements into your own reporting structure to have measures success. Measuring social media is a lot more manual intensive than measuring other our online marketing efforts, such as search engine optimization, SEL, or pay-per-click PPC efforts. If you are planning a social media marketing strategy and having your a team implement the engagement portion of that social media strategy, you need to use different tools to understand how far the engagement is reaching. Monitoring tools can help you locate whether where the conversations about your companies are occurring. They also can help you understand who the key influencers are in different sectors of social media. Some monitoring tools such as Radian 6, Vice Matrix, and Tech Rigi provide deep analysis into monitoring data return. These tools give you information about demographics behind the bars. Other, other keywords used in the words you are monitoring change around the bars and to some degree and look into sentiment analysis. Currently, the technologies behind sentiment analysis can be a give and take situation. Some of these tools enable users to amend their dictionaries, but others do not. With the ones that do not enable you to change definitions, you are limited to what the tools had defined as good or bad. Sometimes, they can lead to some forms or uh, summations about sentiment these tunes present. Monitoring the social media marketing efforts can definitely help you understand how well the efforts are working and whether you should continue with them. However, not everything you do in social media will get immediate traction from a buzzer perspective. Sometimes, building relationship and trust takes time, especially if you are just beginning to engage the audience in social media circles. Marketers are held accountable for the marketing dollars they, they spend. When it comes to social media, marketers get a little edges uh, because it's difficult to determine the return on investment of social media marketing. People have different opinions of what should be measured and how it could be measured. There's no standard way for every business. As with social media strategy, social media measurement differs for each company. However, you won't know what's going or how strategy how strategy needs to be adjusted unless you are setting goals and monitoring and measuring the actions. Measuring in social media is not easy and no one tune does it all. A combination of web analytics, manual interpretations and counting, a calculator and a spreadsheet are most valuable when measuring social media. An essential part of the social media strategies need to be setting goals for success so that you know whether what you are doing is working. 
by setting success goals. For example, measuring involvement of your audience by the number of on posts on your forum, comments on blog pictures or videos watched. You can gauge whether the tactics are engaging the audience in the way you intended. If the engagement strategy is not working, if uh, it isn't reaching the desired goal you have defined as the success, then it is time to re, to re evaluate. Adding these goals to the strategy can save uh, a lot of wasted time and resources. For example, if you set a goal to have a 10% increase in volume of buzz via, uh, via blog uh, post and comments within three months of engaging the blogging the community and that isn't happening you must either take a new approach or stop the engagement tactic maybe you have paid a lot of money to the an agency to have you implement your totally uh, implement the strategy you are not staring start starting to see the needle move a little after a few weeks of implementation. You need to seriously consider a quick re-evaluation. Social media marketing doesn't require you to see a strategy through to the end. In fact, social media marketing is constantly changing. New tools and new ways to communicate and share are always appearing on the internet. If one tactic isn't working as you hope, is it good? A new one could be the right way to engage the audience. Stopping a strategy to reevaluate and tweak the approach isn't shameful. In fact, smart companies do this all the time. Being open to change and different approaches is just another key to building successful social media strategies. Falling in love with tactics and not wanting to let them go when they are falling, when they are failing, often leads to disappointment in social media strategies and foster the belief that social media marketing is a fad and doesn't work. Don't be afraid to throw out what is not working for you, your company, and your strategy. And finally, don't fall in love when you want to conduct your marketing on social media. Although you might love Facebook and think it's a good, great place to uh, communicate with the audience, you might find that the audience is on Facebook. When you look at social media technologies and sharing sites from the own personal view and think, this could be a great place for my company, you need to stop and take a step back. You should perform objective research on whether the audience is really on that platform. The social media site you love might be where the audience is, the chosen platform the audience used might actually surprise you. The audience might be using an old and very well established forum that hasn't updated its platform in a few years and lacks the bells and whistle that never platform offer. People are creatures of habit. If you are comfortable and find something of value, it can be tough for them to change. The same holds true for marketers. You might be comfortable with a particular social media platform and therefore drive all your marketing efforts there. However, if the audience is on different site and all that effort is wasted, try not to fall into that trap. Although you can certainly represent the company through the profile on a certain social media platform, keep in mind that the audience will not necessarily come searching for you on the platform you are most comfortable with. It is certainly uh, doesn't hurt your strategies to put your company's information and content into the profile you have on the favorite social site. It's possible that some conversation about your company when developed there, but just it might not be hitting the target market. And the average internet users who 
who doesn't keep track of the ins and outs of what's going on uh, in social media relies on friends to introduce different social media platforms and communities. In fact, users usually don't even attack the term social media to this community. For the average users, social media sites are simply a place they visit to share their friends and families. If you start seeing the same person in two or three different travel forums and they are quite active in the community, you will likely find a major influencer. These people are dedicating a lot of time to sharing with uh, a, not just one community but a few and their sphere of influence is magnified by moving from one platform to another. Over time, the audience might move. When social media sites upgrade or change features and community members do not accept or embrace the changes to make the community grow, the users tend to move on to a place where they feel comfortable. If the, if the influencers move on, generally others in the community follow. This is another reason, reason you should avoid falling in love with just one site. The audience can migrate from one platform to another. Although humans are notoriously creatures of habit, we also love to feel comfortable. If change happens and we no longer feel comfortable, we will break habits to seek out a new place to find that comfort uh, we previously had. This is why web marketers must be watching listening and actively participating in the community. If you are active in the community, you can stay abreast of uh, mic migrations and understand why they are happening and be ready to adjust the social media marketing strategies for that migration. Sometimes these migrations happen slowly. Other times communities migrate rather quickly. If a new community appears or a competing social media site implements brand new technologies that make communities and sharing much easier, community members will uh, flock to that new platform, especially if the key influencers of the community quickly embrace it. At the beginning of this chapter, I mentioned that the web process might not be the way you will communicate in social media sites in the future. That's why marketers need to start thinking outside of the proverbial box when it comes to marketing online. As companies sell more smartphones across the globe, developers are building applications that enable devices to connect to the internet. Some of these applications don't use the HTTP architectures of a web browser. It's not just about phones. Programmers are developing applications that can access the web without web browser. Consider Twitter as an example. Although you can access Twitter in your browser through its website at www.twitter.com, desktop applications such as TweetDeck enable Twitter users to, to organize, share, and communicate through Twitter without ever touching uh, Safari, Firefox, or Internet Explorer. So what happens if the community you found does, not suddenly, uh, does suddenly disappear? Or what happens if the service goes down for an uncertain amount of time? So much are you reply on just one platform for the social media marketing strategy. Falling in love with unstable platform and banking the entire strategy on it can end up in failure. When Twitter goes down, it makes the front page of CNN. On August 6, 2009, Twitter was the victim of denial of service DOS attack and the sites were down for more than two hours. When the dust attack also impacted Facebook and MySpace. If you use just one forum or message board and you only one form of communication with audience, you could also fall into this dismantled situation. 
what happens if you find that the site has been taken down or known pavement of hosting services that the owner died or that the original company that ran it filed for bankruptcy. This type is when are very real and have happened. It's obsessing the community members who have invested so much time and passion into the community. It is so detrimental for a strategy if the only place you rely on to communicate with the audience. This is why social media marketers should look at a mix of social media tactics when creating their social media strategies. Falling in love with one type of social media site, such as Dig, or a particular platform is dangerous if you don't pay attention to the other places where conversations is happening. So I have introduced to you how to conduct your marketing on social media. Um, there's three important things you should remember. Firstly, don't be afraid of the negative. Secondly, don't be afraid to throw out what is not working. And finally, don't fall in love. Thank you for your listening.